first, uh, that actually gave me goosebumps. I'm blown away by that. Thank you. Um, I, I have no idea what Boriana said. The only word I understand in Bulgarian is rakia, uh, <laughs> which I probably didn't pronounce well. But um, So I'll do this all in English. Uh, she may have said I'm from the west coast of Canada. I'm a 10-hour ten ten time difference away. Uh, so uh, while you guys have just had a very heavy lunch, I'm sure I'm trying to stay awake from jet lag. So we'll see if we can hopefully keep each other awake. Um, today I'm going to give you a presentation on the values in the refresh. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to walk through and show you how we can actually build business intelligence using modern Excel. Uh, it does say Excel 2016 on the screen here, but every tool that I'm going to show you is actually available in Excel 2010, 2013, and 2016. I'm not going to try and teach you how to do this. It's more of a demo. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to try and work through this particular issue here. I'd like to com provide a comparison of revenue versus budgets. It's kind of a standard thing that we do in the world of accounting. One of the challenges I have, though, is I want to be able to allow somebody to drill down into this easily so that they can look at things maybe based on date, maybe they can drill in and look at it based on category, or they can also drill in it based on location. So I want to make this nice and easy for them, but I have a bit of a problem. And my challenge is this. My data is stored in PRN files, which is a version of text files that you may be familiar with because my company will not let me talk to my databases. They feed me a steady diet of text files instead. So anybody have this problem? Yeah? All right, you laugh, but nobody wants to put up their hand for that. Uh, my budgets, though, of course, are stored in the world's greatest calculator, Excel files. So the budget files, for example, might look something like maybe this. So we have locations. We've got three different locations for this business with six or seven different subcategories and the data with dates running across the top. The challenge here is that this data, of course, is already pivoted. And in order to be able to build a model out of it, I need to unpivot that data. So that's one of the challenges that I'm going to deal with. And I'm just going to close this uh, particular file here. The second is that all of my data files that are in pre-RN files, they look like this. So I have lots of these. I've got one of them per month. It's got beautiful little issues with repeating header rows. I see some smiles in the audience. It's like you guys recognize these. Um, so this is what I'm going to be building out of one file per month. And I'm going to be trying to pull this all together into a nice solution that ends up looking like this. So this is going to be a very fast and furious demo. When I timed myself doing this on the airplane with no distractions and no mistakes, it took me 25 minutes, which means I have about 15 minutes left. Okay, so here we go. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting some data. I'm going to go to get data, and yes, not the full screen is showing. Not the full is showing. I'm gonna tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, try and resize it because I don't want to try and waste time messing with screen resolution. So how's that? A little bit. Do 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 do. All right, good enough. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go get data, and I'm going to set myself up for success in the future. I'm actually going to import a whole bunch of files from a folder. So rather than pick up just a specific file, I want to grab a folder that will hold all of them. And now I have to figure out where I put my files. Uh, I think it's somewhere down in here, down in here. And we'll start with budgets. And we'll say OK. Now, one of the challenges that happens when we actually go and connect to files are folders full of files, and we need to try and bring them in. Can you, is that oh, size OK? Do you want me to try and make that a little bit bigger? It's OK here. Let me go, let me go a tiny bit bigger here. How about that? Um, so one of the challenges that we have when we actually try and pull in an entire folder full of files is that there's always somebody in the organization that thinks it's very funny to throw in a different file type into the system. So one of the first things that I do to protect myself from that is force these things to lowercase for the file extension because Power Query, the tool I'm using right now, is case sensitive. And I also throw a little filter on these guys that says equals and we're going to make it force it so that I will only ever see .xlsx files showing up in this list, just in case somebody decides to throw in a text file or something similar. Uh, this is all I want to do to this particular piece here. I'm just going to make myself a new little query here that will allow me to do something. I'm, I'm trying to follow my best practices uh, as well as I go through here. So here is a query called files list budget, which I am then going to go and say close and load and connection, make a connection from it. It's driving me crazy working in a small screen. Here we go. We're going to go back and say only create connection. Now, this will give me a connection to that list of files. 
which I am then going to build off something bigger. I'm going to say reference, and I'm going to create a new query, which is going to be called budgets. Change the name here. Well, I'm not going to spell it quite like that. There we are. And now I'm going to click this little button here, and I'm going to try and combine every single Excel file that's in this folder. Now, right now, there's only one, okay? But by the time I'm done this presentation, there will be more than one. So I want to combine every single Excel file that's in here. And you'll notice that it has a worksheet in it, which you saw earlier. Here's the data, okay? So I get a nice little preview. I can say, okay. And now there's going to be some stuff that happens around here. It's going to blow up with a whole bunch of queries, which are going to help me out. They're a little intimidating. They're a little ugly but they're beautiful in its own way. Because one of these things, if I go back here and just delete this step so it doesn't mess me up later, I'm gonna go here to transform sample. And what you can see is that at this point, I actually have a, it's not a very attractive look into the data, but it is a look at the data that we saw before. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, you know, these first four rows, they don't add any business value to me whatsoever. So I'm gonna go to say, remove rows, remove the top rows, and we're gonna remove the top four rows and they just, it doesn't compromise the underlying files at all. It just changes this so that those rows won't be imported. So, okay, that's cool. I want this location here to be filled all the way down these pieces so that they show up for every row. So we'll fill those down so that looks a little bit better. Well, I think that was up, wasn't it? Let me go and fix that. We want to go down, not up. Right click, fill, down. It's tough working on this angle. Uh, all right, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to promote this first row to headers. So now I'm going to have all of my dates showing up across the top. And at this point, I've got the ability to do a couple of really magical things. I'm going to filter this little column to say remove all the rows that don't have nulls. This will get rid of all of my subtotals and totals in my data because you never want subtotals or totals in your pivot data set. I'm going to make a couple little changes here. I'm going to make a new column called location. I'm going to try and not do that with my caps lock key on. And I'm going to create another new column over here, or rename this column over here. We're going to call it category. And now, wouldn't it be amazing if all I needed to do to unpivot this data was just to select these two columns, right click on them, and say, unpivot other columns, and boom, just like that, it's done. Okay, okay let me help you out with that because you guys plainly missed this. That is amazing! <laughs> okay, all right, so. Now, we don't want totals in this data, so we're going to get rid of this. Uh, let's go total, don't need you here. And I'm going to go and change this to be a real date. And we're going to go and change the value here. I think I'm going to rename it too, but I'm going to call this currency. I'm going to change it out so that it's got a name like amount, because that's a great name for a column that has values in it. And then we'll come back into our budgets over here, and you can see that they have come across into this table, which maybe doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but that's okay. It will a little bit later. Unfortunately, um, Guy, it would be fantastic if you had inherited the data types from what I just came out of. If you can make that happen, please, that'd be great. Uh, so we're going to change this to text. Uh, we're going to change this to text. We're going to change this back to a date, and this one to an amount. And now... Uh, currency, here we are. Uh, now I have a beautiful table that I can go and land into my power pivot data model by saying close and load two. And this guy will go only create connection directly into power pivot. And what you'll see is there's a whole bunch of stuff that ends up happening here. And I have a feeling I've got this horrible thing that's going to happen with my load destinations and something's going to go to the wrong place, but we'll watch. No, it did it right. Oh, this is better. Nice. You snuck that in on me. And now, I'm going to go take a very quick look at the data model just to prove that this data actually landed somewhere. How many of you guys um, have worked with pivot tables all the time, but have not yet discovered power pivot? All right, so you guys all know with the pivot table that the data is in limbo. It's somewhere you can never see it. Here's one of the great things with power pivot is that is my pivot cache right there. I can actually see the data inside it. Okay, one great feature of Power Pivot that isn't even really one of the advertised ones. So there we go. There's one beautiful table. I'm going to also go back here really quick, and I'm going to spin an additional thing off of this. Uh, actually, not with an edit. We're going to go back, and we're just going to make a little reference. This is going to be something I'm going to use a little later. I'm going to reference this, and I'm going to make a new field to build a calendar a little bit later on. This is going to be my end date. I'm going to take this table. It's pulling from the budgets table. I'm going to say, remove all the other columns. I'm going to filter this thing here to say, give me a date filter to just the latest date. Right click, remove all the duplicates from this. I'm going to take this guy here and say transform. Just to be safe, I'm going to force this to the end of the year. 
And then I'm going to right click on this individual cell and drill down. And I now have the very last date that I would ever need for my calendar, which I'm going to go and say home, close and load to, load it to a connection. And we're going to pretend for right now that that never happened. Okay? So we'll come back to that guy a little bit later on. So I pulled my budgets in here. Okay? That's the first part. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my transactions. So we'll go to file, we'll go from folder. And this one I'm going to pull from a slightly different folder. I'm going to try and drill down and find it again. So whoop, not that's not the right one. Here we go. And into Bulgaria, source data, transactions. Now in this folder, you're going to see that there's more than one file. So I can actually prove something that actually works here. There's three files in this guy here. We're going to go edit it. And once again, I'm going to do a, uh, a quick little bit of, uh, of work here. So just to prevent against those crazy users that want to try and cause me some problems, uh, once again, we'll force this to lowercase. And we're going to filter to say equals dot PRN so that when somebody decides to go and have fun and save an HTML file in that folder, it won't blow me up. And again, I'm going to call this one here, oops, files list, dash transactions, and I'm going to load him. Actually, I'm not going to go and load him as a connection only later because I'm going to do a lot of co queries in this particular round here. Now, we'll right click, we'll reference him. This is going to be my transactions query, but first I'm going to actually give this one a name because I'm going to spin all kinds of stuff off of this baby here because I'm going to show you how to build a fully dimensional model inside of Excel. So we have our staging table. I'm going to click Combine the Binaries. Now, there are three binary files in this folder. This little function here will come up now, and it's going to ask me which file would I like to use as a sample. And you can see that oh, even though I've only got three files in here, the only option I have, Guy, is first file. Why can't I see the rest? This is a bug, right? Yes. OK, cool. Guy's on it. So. Um, <coughs> He loves coming to my presentations. Uh, so there's something else that's a little bit weird about this. This is a fixed width file. And yet, for some reason, it comes up somewhere in my data set down near the very end. There's a comma. So it's identified this is a comma delimited file. And I've got this weird thing with column one, column two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not really going to work with comma. I want to be fixed width. And then for some reason, it doesn't actually go and automatically put this in at zero, which is where it should start. So let me just hit tab on that. It'll reevaluate the preview. And now I'm going to get what I really want, which is one column of data. You think one column, really? Well, yes, because you'll see. When I say OK, I'm going to get another collection of queries that's going to build itself out on the left-hand side. Actually, let me uh, see if I can make this so that you can see all of this as well. We're going to go and expand it to the same footprint. There we are. And I now have one column of data here that's showing up at the end. I'm going to go back in and modify the uh, sample transform for this guy here. So this is a function that is actually pointing at the first file on the list, which happens to be the February file, and that's OK. And it's got one big, long column of data, which obviously I need to do something with. So what can we do? Well, the first nine lines here look like they're not going to be very useful. So we're going to go and we're going to say, let's remove the top rows. We'll get rid of the top nine rows here. Now what I need to do is I need to break this into different columns, because I only have one. And it's not delimited by anything except for width. So I'm going to go right click. We're going to say split column. We're going to split it by the number of characters. And we're going to split this based on the number which I know is 23 different characters. And boom, it blows us up. Now this kind of looks a little bit gross. but. If you actually look here, if we click on this, we can see down in the bottom that we actually have the full piece of data. And if we click on it here, we can see the same thing. And if I click on this, I can see that I've actually got two columns here that were broken because it seems that this, this file was actually delimited 23 characters, 23 characters, 23 characters, 46 characters, 23, 23. But the good news with Power Query is that we don't care about that because it's as easy to put something back together as it is to break it apart in the first place. So I'll just go and merge these guys back together with no delimiter. Boom, that looks much better. Well, it kind of looks much better. It's going to look much better when I select everything, right click, transform, and trim it. Now you can see the data is actually in the columns. Okay? So this was a pretty gross text file before, but now it's starting to look not so bad. At this point, I'm going to promote my first row to headers. And now I can start playing around with the different pieces. I'm actually going to undo those two steps because I made a mistake on this one. What I would like to do actually first is I would like to merge this. And if you guys, I just did that really quickly, but I made a mistake and I just unwound it so I could go back to the previous step. 
This is a huge piece about Power Query. The entire audit trail of everything that I've done is down the side here, so I can step through this entire process step by step to see exactly what's going on and change things anytime I want to do that. Now that I've gone back, I'm going to split this column by a delimiter, not by width. It automatically picks up the delimiter for me. I am going to set it to leftmost. We'll say OK, and it splits it into two separate columns. That's better. Now. I'll go back and re-promote my headers because this is what they should look like for this table. And at this point, I go through and I start making changes. I say, you know that uh, column name? I wanted this one called location. I even would prefer to spell it correctly. My POS chit date, I'm going to go and change it to be date. And then I'm going to change this to be a date, but I'm going to force it to tell it that this date is in an English US format. This kind of stuff is really important to me in Canada because I live in a country where we are hopelessly confused about what our official date format is. And I kid you not, I went to a bank once, 10 pieces of paper, 10 different date formats in Canada. Nobody knows what the, or the actual date format is in Canada. We all think it's month, day, year because we live so close to the US, but it's not. So every now and then we get a patriotic IT guy that sets half the computers in the company to Canadian standards, half the company to US standards, and then we start sharing data and it's a nightmare. Okay? So in this case, we can actually force this to say my data came from an English US system and it will now actually go and flip these dates. It will interpret them properly, flip them into the settings that are used by my Windows regional control panel. It returns the correct date serial number so I can land it in Excel and it will just work no matter where in the world I send it, which is great. On the other hand, if I scroll down this list, and let me just zoom in on this so you can see these in all their glory. We have errors. Everywhere I see an error here, it's because it could not convert it to a date. Okay, it says, hey, you know what, this, uh, this cell here that you tried to convert to a date, it says printed by, and the uh, person's name was Anna List, and uh, guess what, um, it doesn't convert to a date very well, which you can imagine. But the beautiful thing about this is that everywhere you see an error as it happens, the rest of the rows on that line are garbage. I don't need them. So what I can do now is I can actually grab this thing and say, I would like you to remove every row that has an error in it, and those errors disappear. On the other hand, I still have some values I don't want, which are nulls, so I'll go and filter these guys out as well. So that looks a little bit better, or it will when it completes. There we go. Now I can change my point of sale chit hour to a whole number. I can rename it to hour, and I happen to know in this column that there is an error that triggers from that as well, so I'll just remove it. And we'll just do a quick filter to make sure that there's no null rows in there. There's not, it looks fine, so we're good to go. POS category, don't like that name, I'm going to call it category. POS, of course, stands for point of sale. Uh, it has another acronym in English, which is why we clean it out, because we don't want that kind of verbiage in our models. Uh, so we've got a, uh, another piece over here for units sold. We'll change that. Units price, I'm going to set to currency. Uh, total sale, I'm actually going to rename a little bit here. I'm going to put a space in there, because it doesn't look like it's real nice. And we'll change this to be currency. Uh, by the way, I found out yesterday in my master class that our two countries de uh, deal with decimals differently. You guys use commas and I use dots. So if we were converting this, that's totally okay with Power Query. We just have to force it to say, I want you to import this as English US systems, and it will recognize the periods. If I were to force it to say import it using a Bulgarian standard, it would actually look for the comma as the final decimal point. The reason why this is a problem is because Canadians use commas to separate their thousands. So if you've got a comma that separates and then decimals, that's going to blow some stuff up. So, uh, so that was an interesting that, as I say, I learned the other day, which was kind of neat. So, uh, all right, this creates my nice little transaction staging table. It all looks good. I'm going to go over to take a look at how this is imported and what you can't see from here. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to take it on faith for a moment. I built that using a sample of one file and it has applied all of those steps that I did to every single file in that folder and then appended them into one big, long, nice list. Okay. So I just did three files at once. And you don't care. Fair enough. All right, I'm going to keep on going then. I'll see if I can find something that makes you go, wow. All right, so uh, the next step that I wanted to look at with this one here is I might say, hmm, well, on my staging transactions, I need another little piece that I'm going to work with here. So I'm going to reference this, and I'm going to build another piece that I need for a little bit later. This one here is going to be called my start date. So you'll notice I'm pulling this from a different table than my end date. The start date is going to be remove other columns. It's going to be 
filter this guy down to be the date filter, whoops, where are we? Come on, stay there. Is earliest, oh, it's working, it's working. Right click, we're gonna remove the duplicates. This one has a date of January 2nd, so we better change this because I don't want my calendar to start on January 2nd. So we're gonna transform this to be the year, the start of year, that'll get it to January 1st, at which point I can right click and drill down and get my start date set up in the correct area. And now what I'm gonna do is before I go any further, I'm just gonna go and close and load these guys all to connections because I don't want any of these landed in the data model. Then I'll go back and start actually adding all of the components that I need for my dimensional tables to build my model. So let me just collapse these so they're out of the way. And we're gonna go back over to my staging transactions, right click and reference, and we're gonna start building some cool stuff now. The first thing that I should probably build is I should build a transactions table. That transactions table is going to be relatively simple. It's going to be transactions. I'm actually going to remove one column from it, which will become apparent why later. We'll remove that one. We're going to say, let's set these guys here. So I've got one, two columns here that are going to be changed into text. I've got a column that needs to be forced to a date. I've got two columns that I need to force to be whole numbers, and I've got two that I'm going to force to be currency. This is my transactions table. This is the table that I want to see in the basically in the bottom right hand corner of my pivot table that I can sum everything up. Okay, so that's the first dimension that I'm dealing with here. And I'm just going to move this guy into a new group, which is called data model, so I can find it a little bit later. And while I'm at it, I'm going to grab all of these guys here and move these into a group called staging because I cannot build a model without actually doing some housekeeping along. It gives me um, horrible anxiety. So, uh, so here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go and start building off some other dimensions. So we're going to go right click on this guy again and say reference and then we're going to move him into the data model because that's where it's going to go. And this one is going to be my items table. My items table is going to comprise of a category and the item fields. I'm going to say right click, remove the other columns. And in order to make a relationship in Power Pivot, I have to have a column that has unique values. That is going to be my items column. So I'm going to select just that. I'm going to remove all the duplicates from it. And then I'm going to set both of these guys to be text. And that is my dimension table for my sales items. Oops, that's not the right place. Here we go. Come on. There we are. Text. I also need a categories table. So I'm going to go back to my staging transactions. I'm going to say right click. I'm going to reference it. And we're going to take him and throw him in with my data model group as well. This will be a category table. There we are. And in my categories, all I need, right click, remove all the other columns. Here's my categories. I need a unique list of categories. So I'll remove the duplicates. There they are. And this comes directly from my data now, which is kind of nice. And then we'll go and say text. I feel like I'm missing another dimension. Oh, I know. How about a locations table? That would be a good one. So we'll go right click on this guy here and we'll say reference. We'll move this one into my data model group as well. And we're going to say, we'll call him, ca uh, this one is going to be, sorry, locations. My brain is about two steps ahead of where I need to be right now. I'm also going to fix that so it's spelt right because that would drive me crazy. Oh man, I'm going to really try hard. Spelling is very difficult. It's actually in overtype mode, which is perfect. There we go. All right, so locations, that's better. And once again, we can right click, we can remove the other columns. We can remove the duplicates. And we can force this to be text. Now, these are the main dimensions that I need in order to drive my table. So. I think I also need to actually just move my budgets because he belongs in this data model group. This is where all of my tables are going to load go. There's one more dimension that I need in order to actually make this work, and that's a calendar dimension. If you're going to work in Power Pivot, um, for those of you who are working in Power Pivot, if you are building any time analysis models and you are not building a calendar table, there is a ticking time bomb on your model before it screws you up. Okay, you need a calendar table. You should never avoid it. It's one of the number one things that I have with people that come to me and they say, hey, my stuff's not working. My, my formulas aren't working. Why don't you have a calendar table? Well, I, I just thought I'd try and avoid it. Just don't. It's not worth it. Okay, so one of the things I love about Power Query is that I can actually build a beautiful new calendar table here that is completely dynamic to my data. 
I created two variables earlier which were called start date and end date. And what I can do is I can create a nice little list here that says number dot from start date dot dot number dot from end date. And here we go. Is that not the most beautiful calendar you have ever seen? <laughs> All right, fine. Um, it feels like you're laughing to humor me. Uh, so let me turn this into a table and see if I can do a little bit better for you here. So uh, this box just slows me down. Uh, here we go. We're going to go and we're going to change this to a date and we're going to go and put a nice little column name on it. And here is date. And there you go. Just like that, it takes me about 30 seconds, uh, if I'm not trying to explain it, to build a calendar out of my data. Okay. This calendar is completely dynamic, so whatever happens in my source data, it will always expand from the earliest date in my transactions to the latest date, actually the end of the year for my latest date in budgets. So as long as I don't end up in one of those habits, how many of you budget after your year end is done for the past couple of months that have already been completed? Nobody wants to put up their hand for that? Not even you, Guy, because I know you do. Um, so, um, Guy loves me. He, I get to pick on him all the time, and he just nods and smiles. He's the best, most friendly person in the world. Um, you know, as long as you're budgeting in advance of a period happening, everything's fine. If you're not, then you need to change your logic, and, obviously. But the beautiful thing about this, I've got an awesome little calendar table. So, I can now go and say, you know what, I want to add a new column. I'd like to add a year. And boom, just like this, there's a new year for me. Excellent. So I'm going to go and say, you know what, how about I add maybe the uh, month? I'm going to go with the name of month. Actually, you know what? I saw something that Guy did in a demo a little earlier uh, today that I thought, you know what, this, this might be actually kind of interesting. So column from selections, uh, what I want to have here is I want Jan, and I want to hit enter, and then I want another Jan. Will this actually do this for me? Oh, hey, look at that. It does. Cool. So we better not call it literal. I'm going to call that month. Well, I do, but you know what? That's because I've got all Jans. Oh, I see. We got, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you got to pay attention to what you're doing with your data. That's important. Uh, let's try Feb here. Will it? Nah, you know, I wish it would work that way. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to go back to the old way that I used to work. I had to try it. I had to try it. It works with month names. I know, but I'm going with short month names. So here's, I'm going to do this the way I usually do. I'm going to add the whole name of the month. It's going to add the whole name for me, which I can then go back and transform and say, let's extract the first three characters. And there we go, that looks good. And then I need one more thing to work with Power Pivot to get this to all sort properly. We're gonna grab the month number as well. But not there. That's a bad place to do it because I just broke my whole calendar, okay? So we're gonna go back to this. And this is one of the things that's a little bit confusing when you start working with Power Query is that most of the commands are actually on two tabs. They're on the transform tab and they're on the add column tab. What I just did is I selected my date column and from the transform tab, I transformed it to a month number, which meant that it got rid of the old one and just used the new piece. If I go back to add column, it will actually preserve this column, which is what I really wanted, and it will actually allow me to add a completely new column that has the month number. So that is my calendar dimension. The only thing it needs now is a real name, like calendar. Calendar, there we are. I'll move it into my data model groups over here. We're going to go say home, close and load two. And I'm going to choose to load all of these guys into the Power Pivot data model. So this will take a little bit of time, not too long hopefully, uh, as it goes through and it runs each of these steps for each of the files and builds all of its individual dimensions off of it. Here we go, we're getting closer. There we are, fantastic. And now I can go to manage data model and inside Power Pivot in diagram view we can see that I have all of my tables. Now, for those of you who have never worked with Power Pivot, uh, this looks a lot like Microsoft Access or something similar. Um, so I'm just gonna move some stuff around here a little bit so that I can actually build the model the way I want to. Uh, as long as you have a proper one-to-many relationship set up between your tables, what I'm about to do cannot possibly go wrong. Uh, I'm gonna say category is gonna be linked to category. I'm gonna say that category is also linked to the budgets category. I'm going to link item to the item fields. My calendar dates are going to be linked to my dates here. And also, uh, oh man, it looks like I have one small problem I'm going to have to fix. And my location is going to be linked to location here. 
and a location here. It seems that I have a column in my, um, in my or budgets table which is still called attribute. That's supposed to be called date. So not to be undone by this, I am going to go back over to Power Query. I'm going to find my budget table, right click and say edit, and I'm going to adjust the query. And this is something else that is fantastic about Power Query is that you can go and change your setup anytime you need to. When I go and hit close and load now, this will reload this table into the model. There's my 216 rows. There we go. It's waiting. It's completing. Now we'll go back to manage data model. I should have now a nice little column here called date, which I will link together. One small change that I need to make here in order to get things to sort right in data view. You can see all of my individual tables down the bottom here. I'm going to go to my calendar table, find my month names, and I'm going to sort these by the month number column. This is a lot of back-end work. Okay? Now, the thing is with this is that I'm actually laying a bunch of groundwork in order to be able to actually build the intelligence that I want. Even with all of this work done, you still see nothing here. But this is the guts for everything that I want to build. And it's completely dynamic, and it's going to absolutely blow your mind if you've never seen this kind of stuff happen once I actually put it in place. So let's build something that we can actually look at. I'm going to go to the Insert tab, and I'm going to go and insert a pivot chart. This is new for Excel 2016. We do not need to create a pivot table before we create a pivot chart. We can actually create the pivot chart directly against the Power Pivot Data model without having anything in the way. So I'm going to say OK here. I'm just going to get rid of this. And what we'll do is we'll throw uh, here, let me see here, what would I like to do? I'm going to put on my calendar, I think I'm going to put a um, month name on my axis. Maybe I'll put year above that. And then I think from the transactions table, I'm going to put my total sales on here. And I'm also going to go to the budgets table and put my amount on here. All right, so i got to ask you guys, do any of you guys actually really work with pivot tables? Because what you just saw here is about 25 of years of evolution in Excel, and you guys are all just sitting there looking at it like... <laughs> this is amazing, guys. I have just pulled values from three completely separate tables, put them all on one pivot chart with no VLOOKUPs whatsoever in one place. This is amazing! <laughs> yes, that's better, okay. This is why you need Power Pivot. This is why you need Power Query in order to be able to build these models. This is incredible stuff. Now, d you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, the pivot chart that we've built here is still ugly, but uh, I can fix that too because I've got tools, right? So I can go in here and I can say, you know, let's get rid of these awful field buttons. Um, let go hide all on those. Uh, we could, uh, you know, right click and move the legend down where it belongs. Uh, so we'll put that at the bottom. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Oh, I should change the names on these two. Total sale. That's not really all that good. So we'll go in and we'll put this in and we'll, we'll call it something like revenue. Whoop, if I can type. There we are. Revenue. I'm going to go and put the, uh, the budget here. and We're gonna actually going to call it budget instead of amount. And I could get much more detailed with this, building my own measures to do all kinds of things. But there's that piece. And of course, every chart I, I don't know why pivot charts are created without these. I honestly don't. This is a, a, a shame. Uh, it really needs a title. That's kind of an important part of your chart. Uh, so we will call this one something like, uh, how about um, revenue versus budget? All right. Now, I've got a beautiful chart. We can see we've got three months of, uh, of actual revenue. We've got uh, a whole bunch of budgets that have actually been pulled in, which is kind of nice. Remember, that budget information was all pivoted. It's unpivoted. It's working in our data. Now I want to make these things sliceable. So I'll select my pivot chart. I'm going to go to Analyze. I'm going to insert a couple of slicers here. We're going to put one in for Categories. This is table number four, I think, that we're putting into this. Uh, we're going to put one in for Locations. There we go. And this will bring in slicers. How many people here have never seen a slicer before? Yeah, OK. Um, so you might be uh, used to, if you're working with pivot tables, they've always had those little drop-down arrows on the field. And when you actually send your pivot table to another user to actually use, and you say, oh, yeah, yeah, just filter it. And they say, ooh, no, that's scary. How about I phone you and you do it for me? 
right? You guys run into this? That drives me crazy. So, so here's the thing with slicers. I think slicers are actually one of the most uh, unbelievably beautiful inventions in, uh, in modern history with Excel. Because when you put one of these things in front of your user, the experience is totally, totally different. You put this on a sheet like this, and they go, ooh, something shiny, and they click it. And at that point, everything cross filters. They go, really? Wow, neat. And they click it again, and things start to drill in. So it's a totally different experience. Now, this right here is worth the entire price of admission for a pivot table. Because as you can tell, I am a very introverted, antisocial accountant. I don't like to talk to people. The most intimidating thing in my life is when my phone rings. It's like, what am I going to do with that, right? So I'm trying to avoid phone calls. If I can give my users something that they can drive the stuff themselves, I win because they don't call me, and now I can mess around with Excel learning new stuff, right? So that's a win-win. Now, let's go and select this guy again here. Um, I'm going to go and put something else on this because it also needs a little bit more. So I'm going to put on a timeline. So uh, for those of you who have worked with slicers and you're thinking, yeah, that's old hat, uh, maybe you haven't seen these. These came in in Excel 2013. Uh, and the timeline is the, uh, it's a sp slicer that is specific for dates. Now, I have some weird problems with screen redraw on this uh, when I'm doing demo when I'm connected to something. But uh, you can see I can filter to years or I can filter to months. And if I click on January, it will drill directly into January. Let me see if I can pick a category that's got more sales here. There we go. That's better. Uh, I can expand this to January and February. I can expand it to actually bring March as well. Uh, or even longer if I like to as well. So I now have, um, from working through this stuff, a three text files, one Excel file, all pulled in, built a full dimensional model, landed it in a worksheet with nice, shiny, pointy, clicky devices that people can interact with. How cool is that? Yeah, all right. So what's my time supposed to go till? I have five minutes? Well, that's perfect because now I want to talk about this. So now here comes the issue. You know what happens when you build one of these amazing reports and you give it to your boss, right? They just want more. They always want more. Now, the reality, I built this model in about 20 minutes. Uh, if you're doing this in the real world, it's, uh, I mean, the amount of investment in time that I put into this to be able to replicate it that fast is obviously um, a lot. So a model like that's going to take you maybe eight hours by the time you've gone and collected your data. You've experimented with it to clean it up. You've modeled it for a bit. And that, I mean, that's if you've got the skill. So then what happens when your boss comes back and says, great, now I need you to update it to show me two full years. And my meeting is in 15 minutes. And you go, oh, great. Oh, that's awesome. So is it going to take you days? Because if it took you two days to build it up front, the challenge is if it takes you two days to update it again, that's not acceptable anymore. Is it going to take you hours? Well, maybe. Is it going to take you two minutes? Because that's what you need it to be. All right. So the question really is, can you go and take something like this where we grab another budget file and we grab a whole bunch more transaction files and can you go back over to this model and hit one button and wait for this to actually do a refresh in less than two minutes. This is where, oh no way. <laughs> Remember the updates this morning. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be a live demo if something didn't go somewhat wrong, right? That's just the way it goes. Now, I can see that it's still retrieving data. It's still doing something. So let's see what actually happens with this because uh, I, I have faith that it will still come through for me anyway. So, no, it's going uh, to cause me a problem here. Column attribute wasn't found. Okay, you know what? I know what actually happened here. So this is where we're going to go and take the next experience where we are going to click Escape and stop it from doing its updates. Yep, okay, that's fine. And we're going to go back and we're going to very quickly edit and fix my calendar. Uh, I know what's going on here. It's actually my start date and my end date, I think, that are having some challenges here. Can't find the column called attributes. Removed other columns. This column is actually now called dates. But of course, we filtered rows on this guy here to say that this is supposed to be dates and this is also supposed to be dates. We removed the duplicates. Okay, that worked better. Calculated end of year, which again would be on the date column. 
it really pays to actually have this right the first time, just for reference, you know, it's one of the, the key things I always like to, uh, to try and, uh, and deal with these things. Um, I had my daughter come and ask me the other day for, uh, for whiteouts, and uh, I said, you know, I'm sorry, kid, I don't have any of that, I don't make mistakes. Um, and she kind of laughed at me, and I'm just proving right now that that just is not true. All right, so here we go. Oh, yeah, it's all being recorded, and it's in its infinite glory, absolutely. So here we go. <coughs> just don't give it to my daughter, that's, that's all I ask. Um, <laughs> like she believed me for a second. All right, we're going to try this again. Can you update it? Can you update it and fix all the bugs and re-update it in two minutes? That's the question now, right? So, um, so once this actually happens, oh, oh, but wait, you haven't seen the magic yet. It completed, but let's hear it. Here, check this out because I've actually got two years of data, okay? That's the big piece here. So, yes, darn rights, woo! <laughs> woo, all right. Here's the reality with your job. Time costs money, okay? Manual updates consume valuable time and expertise. You are not built to be doing the same job over and over and over again. That is boring and you get tired of it and you make mistakes doing that. You need to keep yourself excited about your work. And we do that by making sure that the redundancy and the drudgery of doing our job, we only have to do it once and we can move on to other things. One click refresh, which is what Power Query offers you here, decreases your time, lowers the required skill set. What that means is you can build the model and give it to somebody at a way lower pay grade to actually press the button, okay? If you can't automate the routine to press the button, okay? Because that's the better way of doing it too. Um, that'd be the no click refresh. This increases opportunities for you both personally and professionally and it gives you more opportunity to actually change and impact your business. The true value of your business intelligence solution is not in the initial analysis. That does add value. But the real value is the ability to actually go and refresh that in an instance to get the information you need so you can move on and do the other things that your job requires. And that's it. Thanks very much, folks. Enjoy it. And uh, I'll be hanging out all day, so um, we'll be around.